So today we're going to be learning another form and that form is going to be called the general form. So here's the slope intercept form. So uh, that one basically says it all. It has a slope, the y intercept in it. So aptly named. The other one is what's called the general form. And that's where you take that exact equation and make it all equal zero. Okay? So is it useful? No. Okay? The slope y intercept form is pretty useful because I can graph from it. Um, the general form isn't helpful at all, but it's where it all equals zero. And later on, you can see that it can be useful for finding uh, y intercepts and x intercepts quite easy. Okay? But mostly what we want to be able to do today is be able to A, create the slope y intercept form from a graph and then get it to general form. Okay, so we just got some algebra going on today. So here would be a very good example of here is an equation. Uh, we want to, number one, graph it. And then it wants the equation in these, these two forms. Okay, so the first thing is let's graph it. Okay, they give us nicely the y-intercept, which is 0, 4. Should always be 0, comma something if it's going to be y-intercept. And how will I find my next point? How will I find my next point? Yes. So I'm going to go down 1 and write uh, de trois. And I will go down 1 and go right three again to just even give me a little bit nicer line to draw with. Okay. Now, do you always have to do that? No. I just want people to know because some people, if I just always go off the four, they're like, you can go like slope off any point on that line. The answer would be yes. Don't ask me why I want to draw this line so long. I don't need it that long. And as you can see, it's not very accurate. It is easier to do this if you just had a ruler. Okay, so that's kind of in the ballpark. And so that's not even good. Okay, so that would be your equation of the line. Okay, I'm still not happy with that. But okay. Um, now, slope y-intercept form. Now remember, the slope y-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. Okay? So... Let's just put it in. We have y equals my m is negative one third. I put my x in there. Don't forget about it because it's an equation. If I don't have an xy in my equation, I can't find xy's. And then plus four. Okay? So that's what we call the slope intercept form. Or more specifically, the slope y intercept form. Now, I just want to get this thing. So it equals 0. Okay? Now the first thing that you always have to do is whenever you have an equation, you can get rid of fractions by multiplying everybody by the denominator. Okay? So what's the denominator in this? 3. So if I multiply this by 3, this by 3, and this by 3, I get rid of that 3. So then I will have 3y equals negative 1x plus 12. Those are equivalent forms. So you can only do this when there's an equal sign. Like if you just gave me 3 quarters. I can't just go multiply that by 4 and then, hey, it's 3. Because 3 quarters doesn't equal 3, right? But when you have an equal sign, you're allowed to do that. Now, second goal is to have a zero on one side. Now, if you were moving furniture and you had a choice of moving one couch or two couches, move the one couch. It's going to be less work. 
So you can see we can move the 3y to the other side. would only be moving one thing. If I was to move everything to the left side, I would have to add 1x, and I would have to minus 12. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to minus 3y here, and that will give me a 0. And the proper form is always xy number, just like the alphabet, okay? x, y, z, whatever numbers go last. So to really make this perfect, it would be negative 1x minus 3y plus 12. This is your general form. Yep. Okay, very good. Yep. Yep. No, that's good. Okay. So, Santa kind of just gave it away, but that's okay. Okay. In general form, this is technically wrong because you cannot have the very first number a negative. Okay? So, we're going to multiply everybody by negative 1, which does not change the, f the accuracy of it. This becomes 0 equals 1x plus 3y minus 12. So, is the y term allowed to be negative? Yes. Is the last term allowed to be negative? Yes. Just the term in front of the x has to be positive, okay? Okay, so this technically would be wrong. Because, and just put a no at the negative sign, point to that negative sign, no. And then there's a positive here. That's a yes. Okay. So, so this is a really good example because it pointed, it did that for us right away. I'm just going to. Okay. Now, let's keep going. Okay. Slope. A line has a slope of two fifths and passes through negative two on the y axis. Okay. So there's the picture of it. So y equals mx plus b y equals slope is 2 fifths x minus 2. What's this called? The slope intercept <coughs> form. Okay, so who can remember now how to get this into general? It's the first thing we do, yeah? Okay, so to get to general, we need to first get rid of that fraction. So I'm going to multiply everybody by 5. So it'll give me 5y equals 2x plus, or sorry, minus 10. Okay. Now, to do in general form, it has to equal 0. So I'm going to minus 5y, okay, and I will get 0 equals 2x minus 5y minus 10. Now, I could have put the minus 5y on the end, but then I would have had to do another step because we really need to make sure this is positive and that we're in order. Okay, and this is called general form. Now again, general form is actually, it looks nice, but it's useless as far as information giving. Where the y-intercept form, the slope y-intercept form, uh, has a slope and y-intercept in it, right? But we still have to know how to go back and forth. Okay. Um, I'm saying I don't think we need to do another one. We just did two of them. Now, now we're going to move on to if they give me a slope and a point, find the equation in standard form. 
Okay. Now, here are the two that... Now, this second one here, you should already know. M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Um, this first form came from putting this up here. Do you see this used to be down here? And it was just m brought up there. It was multiplied. It took the escalator up. Okay. Now, this form here is the more usable form, though. So we're always going to use that if they give me a slope and a random point. See, it's not the y-intercept anymore. Random point. Okay? So I'll show you how this works. So we have a line has a slope of negative 1 and passes through point 0.24. So now it's not giving us the y-intercept. So we just can't boop, pop it in and then go. Okay? So we're going to use this new equation. Y. Now, there's two ways it can be. It can be y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. That's the form we're going to use. So the y and the x we're not going to mess with. They're in our equation. But that y1 and x1, we're going to substitute our point in. This is going to be x1, y1, and this one's going to be our m. Okay, so let's try it out. So y minus 4 equals m is negative 1, x minus 2. Okay, so you see how the minuses are in the formula. That is not a negative 4 and a negative 2 that I substitute. I put in a 4, 2. Now, we will get y by itself. First thing we need to do, though, is we want to get rid of these brackets. Okay? We want to get rid of those brackets. So y minus 4 equals negative 1x plus 2. Everyone see how I got the plus 2. Okay? Now, the last thing I need to do to get y by itself is add 4. So y equals negative 1x plus 6. So, what is the slope? Negative 1 over 1. What is the y int? 6. So to graph it, now we're back to our last few days lessons. I put the 6 down, and I will go over 1, down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1, down 1. Okay? I think I'm getting the idea of what that line is. Okay, so this is when they give me a slope and a point. So we're going to do this when they give me slope and a point. Now, obviously, a point that's not the y-intercept. Because if it's the y-intercept, you'll see I could go through all this and you're like, ah, oh, crap, I could have just put the y-intercept right in there. Okay, but it would still work. This slope point form works for even if they give you the y-intercept. Okay. Let's keep on working these. So, for each of the following, determine the equation in both the general form and slope-intercept form. Okay. So, this one is making us first use the slope-point equation. So number one, we're going to have to use the slope point equation. Okay. Then number two, we're going to... How'd it go? Okay. Number two, we are going to find slope y-intercept form. Actually, let's write the... This is y minus y1 equals m x minus x1, right? Then the slope point form, which is 
y equals mx plus b. And then 3, we're going to convert to the general form, which is ax plus by plus c equals 0. Um, actually, let's stay consistent. These are all capital letters. So let's AX, BY plus C. Okay, since they give me the slope and a point, I can use my slope point equation. Mathematicians aren't that creative in their naming systems. They're pretty, pretty direct, okay? It's not like they call it Johnny's equation or this rock and awesome thing we're going to do equation. It's just to the point, right? So, let's put it in. Y minus, now, I always do this because you see how Y's we do first? So some people look at the coordinate and they put, they do that one first. And then they see this is second, so they do that second, okay? So maybe it doesn't hurt to put this as X1, Y1 right on top, so I am picking them right. So this would be Y minus 3 equals m is 2 thirds x minus negative 1 is plus 1 okay so what do we do next I'm going to get this 2 thirds in there so y minus 3 equals 2 thirds x minus 2 thirds plus 2 thirds. What am I doing? Okay, plus 2 thirds. Okay, and then what do I got to do? I gotta add three. Now what's the fun in adding three here? It's not a common denominator, is it? So two thirds plus three we can't do. So no, I could go two thirds plus nine over three, right? Because three is the same thing as nine over three. But I needed to do that to get common denominator. So this would equal 11 over 3. So then my new equation would equal y equals 2 thirds x plus 11 over 3. Okay, so you can circle this and go like arrow there and then arrow there. So later you're not like, where did I get that 11 thirds from? So remember, 3 over 1 is the same thing as 9 over 3, but I couldn't add 3 over 1 because I needed to have a common denominator. So that is my slope. So this is okay. Now, I need to get that to general form. So what should I do first? Multiply everybody by 3. Okay, so let me just write this again. Y equals 2 thirds X plus 11 thirds. I'm going to multiply everybody by 3. And I will get 3Y equals 2X plus 11. What's left? Minus 3y to both sides. 0 equals 2x minus 3y plus 11. That's my general form. That was my slope. This is my slope point equation.
Okay. Um, now these two examples are the next. They're all, all three of these are the same. I don't know. Let's just do another one and then let you start on your way here. Now a slope has a line of negative one quarter and passes through negative four two. Okay. So this is slope point, which is y minus y one equals m x minus x one. They give me a slope and a point. I'm going to use this form. Okay, remember, this is x1, this is y1, this is m. So y minus negative 2 is y plus 2 equals m negative 1 quarter x minus negative 4 is plus 4. Okay, who remembers what I do next? Get this in here. So y plus 2 equals negative 1 quarter times x is negative 1 quarter x. And what's negative 1 quarter times 4 over 1? It's negative 1. Okay. What do I do next? minus 2 to both sides. So y equals negative 1 quarter x minus 3. Okay, Sana, what did you do first? What did it look like after you did that? Okay. Okay. So we could do that, or we could, let's get everything on one side, and then we'll, ha we'll see we need to do that. Okay. So we'll minus 4y. So I will get 0 equals negative 1x minus 4y minus 12. Okay. And <coughs> as Sam was telling us before, we can't leave it like this. You're not allowed. Okay, again, this is our notes, right? So put not allowed a negative. And this is something you definitely want to write on a study sheet because these are those little things that get you later when you're studying for your final exam. If it's written on a study sheet, it's just going to like jump out at you and you're going to go, oh, yeah, 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 I remember that. Okay? If you leave it off your study sheet, you'll probably choose this one on the multiple choice because you wouldn't have been reminded of that. So to do this, to get it nice, we're going to multiply everybody by negative 1, even the 0, which I know isn't going to do anything, but at least we're inconsistent. 1x plus 4y plus 12. That is general form. Okay, and we could just put this. This was slope int form. Okay. Is this making sense? It's just getting into the routine of knowing what to do. So oh. um, weird. Hold on for a sec. Yeah, I know you don't, and I actually picked other questions. I just want to see, because I had nothing. Okay, so four, yeah, I like it, five. Okay, so this is what I had picked, and hopefully.
hopefully it doesn't interfere with any other homework. Because I went to page 384. Oh no, there's some 384 stuff. Okay, so maybe we, okay, so we'll do 372. Okay, so four, sure, that's almost too easy for you. But five, yep. Six, yep. something here that makes you put these in general form, but I'm not seeing that. Okay, so I just want to give you so 384. Let's do one where you have to put it in general form. Two, three. Okay, so that one goes the other way. Ah, 18. Okay. So, and then page 384, number 18. Okay, and that worksheet that I gave you today, we, w we won't work until tomorrow. <laughs>